G'day Internet and welcome to River City Ransom Underground Underground. My name is Andrew Russell, I'm the lead programmer on River City Ransom Underground and in the show I talk to you about some of the technical features in the River City Ransom Underground engine. Now, uh, you will remember in the last two episodes, so over here episodes 11 and 12, I talked to you about some of the pathfinding in River City Ransom Underground and I showed you this little demo here. So um, we're back to my favorite testing level and if I just zoom out and stick down my little navigator test man you know we showed um let's get Glenn out of the way he can stand up here um <clears throat> so I showed you know we can click around the level and you know the little navigator test thing will move to where I click and this becomes the basis for um all of, all of the combat functions so if I wanted to go and fight fight Glenn you know I'd come and pick a position next to Glenn and I you know the AI knows how to get there is sort of the important thing that this does. Um, so in this episode and the next one, I'm going to talk about some, uh, some of the sort of challenging bits and pieces that we had to deal with to make this work. So, you know, the um, AI, AI makes some sort of nice paths around the level. And um, so I'm going to talk about one thing we had to do to make sure that those paths are nice. So let's go over to the whiteboard and uh, yes so right before I started recording this I had made another attempt and my paint program had crashed so let's see if we can um, not that one see if we can get it to uh, behave itself this time yeah that's that's much better so so um let's see Try that even better. Okay, so we're all configured and ready to go again. So in a, um, how am I gonna explain this? So let's go and have a look, in fact, at the visual test program. And I'm gonna bring up this one. So you remember that um, we talked about how we divide the level up into these sectors and in between each sector is an edge and those edges provide a mechanism where you can go between one sector and the next. And so what happens is if um, I pop a little guy down, you know, he will form out paths that go between the sectors and um, pauses that button. And uh, if, you know, if I zoom in, you can see that this uh, edge here is highlighted because that's, you know, the edge he needs to go through. You see the same thing here again, and I'll talk about um, why the we're not highlighting the entire edge uh, later on. But just for this episode, just you know, think of this as this is the first edge to hit, then the second edge, then the third edge. We go through these edges down to here and through this edge. Uh, this is this red to brown edge that's being highlighted by just a single pixel here, and we go down to the brown edge, uh, brown sector. And so you know, if I let that play, he'll um, whoops he'll go through all of those edges to make it to his destination. So, you know, it's important that we make nice paths through here. So let me show you an example. Um, so a nice path, let's talk about, let's talk about, I was going to save this for next episode, but I'm going to talk about it now, I think, because this is best time. So let's say we're a first person shooter game. And we have um, you know, this guy, and we're in a first person shooter, so obviously he's got a gun, you know, shoots bullets and whatever. Um, and, you know, he's probably represented by some position that's, say, around his feet. And, you know, say we've got, say we've got our, uh, you know, our analog controller, or, you know, we might have a mouse or something, but. You know, we've got these analog joysticks like this. And um, what you can do with that is, you know, you can push that in a given direction and you'll go at some speed. And say you push it all the way to the edge, you know, it goes out any direction to some maximum speed. And what happens, um, you know, if, if we drew a circle around all of these uh, possible arrowheads, that's sort of vaguely circular. Um, 
you know, that would be the distance that he could go wherever we, you know, pointed the, um, pointed the analog controller. But now let's say we have a character in River City Ransom Underground and, you know, apparently they're shorter, but that's okay. They kind of are. And, um, you know, he's represented by a position or she, I suppose. Um, and, you know, if you were to hold the controller out in this direction, what we would do is we'd snap it down to here and you would actually go in this direction. And it's the same over here. Whereas if you went up, you would go slightly slower because we have this, um, you know, this is sort of the projection we have, you know, distances on the ground look shorter than, pff, I don't know what happened there. So, oh, I've clicked them off screen and he ran into a wall. Um, you know, distances up and down appear, you know, long, longer than distances along the floor. Distance along the floor seem shorter so you've got this sort of perspective foreshortening and so what that means is that when you move up and down in the game the actual player speed is lower to account for that and so you can only go in these four directions but you can combine them so you can go in this direction here and 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 these are just raw combinations of um you know, the uh, up, down, left, right direction. So what happens is if you know, we draw around these arrows, you get a sort of rectangle. And you'll just have to trust me from my mediocre drawing. So um, what this means is that, so in a first person shooter, say we have, we want to go somewhere, we want to go to, I'm going to, I'm going to do this for both, so, um, so I want target, so X marks a spot, you know, um, and let's say X marks a spot. The path that we want to take in both these cases is different. So in this case, we can just go straight towards the target in a very direct straight line. Whereas in River City Ransom Underground, you know, we want to make a path like a player would make. Um, you know, we want to go along for a bit and then sort of down like that. Because that is the smooth path, smoothest path. If we tried to, um, if we tried to do it this way, what we'd end up getting, because you know, the characters are restricted to only moving in these four directions, you get, um, you know, you wouldn't get a nice path down there. You're going to have to draw this bigger. What would happen is you'd get a path that looked like that, and then 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 that, sort of a stair-stepping, which would look very ugly. Um, you know, the character would sort of flicker as he went down. Whereas if we make a path like that, it looks quite good. So um, there is there is code in the game that... Um, figures out what this path should look like and the, the turning point. Now, of course, um, you know, let's say we put an obstacle in the way, like, uh, I'm just going to make a thing. Um, you know, the first person shooter case, we probably have them just, you know, take a curved path or maybe like go out to this point here and then you know go diagonally in both cases whereas uh, what we'd rather do is we'd actually rather come up with this path and you know so that's sort of the problem that we're trying to solve in um, in this case so the way we do it um, so I won't really talk about how we come up with these paths because I mean you know we just do like it's just some code there's no no pretty visuals but um we do need to resolve the case when there's a as a barrier in the way and we want to come up with a good path and the, what this ends up looking like is um 
if we go back to the visual test, you know, a barrier, say this circle here, you know, turns into a series of edges because that's the only thing that the pathfinder cares about. So this um, this thing here just ends up looking like a bunch of edges, like uh, so. You know, um, let's draw it like this. So this is the this is the thing blocking us, and the edges are just you know, there's an edge here, there's an edge here, there's an edge here, and there's an edge here, and there's an edge here, or whatever whatever it actually looked like. And so the thing is, you know, when when our guy is sort of standing here and wants to pathfind, the way he pathfinds is through these edges. So he will just go, um, let's keep my colors consistent. Um, you know, he will try and go through this edge or he will try and go through this edge. You know, there's no, like he might, for some reason, maybe he might try and go through this edge at this point here and go around the barrier or at this point here and go around. But there's no way he's going to go smack into the barrier. Like that's not going to happen. Um, but when he does go through this uh, through this barrier, uh, I will pick a different color for this particular one. He, we want him to go, you know, that way, and then that way. So, and off to wherever he's going. You know, in a nice path like this. So. The, uh, the sort of conclusion of all that is like I will now explain how we solve this problem, um, and that is we do some clipping of the edges. So I'm going to make a new layer here so we can have a clean thing to work on. Okay, so let's yeah. So so we've got the case where we want to go from draw it nice and big. We want to go from here and we want to get to a target say here and the path we want to take to get to that target is going to be I think I liked, liked another color. It's going to be across a bit and then down in this diagonal like that. Um, Let's ignore my phone going off there. Um, so that's that's this is the case. Say we're in just one sector. You know, this might all just be one. Whoa! Whoops. Yeah, this might all just be one sector like we described back in um, I think episode 11 where we talked about how we divided up the world into sectors and the important thing about a sector is you can move anywhere within that sector and you won't run into like a you know a obstacle like that so but what happens if we start dividing this up into sectors well we won't we won't bother dividing it up into sectors because that's not the important thing but we will insert some edges so if say we insert an edge here you know we still want to be able to get to there so um, the naive way that we could do this pathfinding is we could say well you know rather than targeting that I want to target the first edge so that's edge zero let's say you know if we didn't do any special handling for this we'd probably just go well I want to get to this edge as soon as possible so we go to there and then we'll cruise on down to um, this point here like that. And you get this ugly sort of down and then across and then across, you know. We're basically trying to reduce the number of, um, sort of elbows in this path, you know, as few of these things as possible. So it becomes even worse if, say, we have a case where we've got, you know, the path does this, like, uh, say that's another edge, and say, um, say that's another edge. You know, the last thing we want to do is generate a path that looks like this. Like, we go down here, or even, yeah, we'll go down there, and then, oh, we want to get to the closest point on this edge, so we end up coming, um, probably, what would happen is we'd probably have to go 
down there, and then we come across. We want to get to the closest point on this edge, and so we'd probably have to come down again, and then across, and from here, you know, we come down again, and then across, and you get this stair-stepping um, maneuver, and you know, you've got all of these, one, two, three, four, five, six, um, elbows in the path that the character takes and this you know this looks really bad what makes it look even worse is um you know these edges are fixed in the level so um if for instance you have like a whole lot of guys um you know there's like a, a team of bad guys just enters the level and they all coming you know come and get you uh, that one coming to get the uh, you know the good guy we'll draw him in green today they're coming to get you standing here if they all come through at once it becomes very obvious where these edges are because they'll end up sticking a whole lot of you know turning points along this line and you know they're all sort of moving in fact yeah they won't do exactly that because um, obviously you know say they're there, this one will come there, and then come to this point, and this one will come there, and come to this point, and then they'll keep following the same path. So you get, you know, you get them congregating on these edges, and it just looks really bad. Um, whereas, you know, you would ra much rather than just, you know, take this uh, simple path like that, um, and take, you know, this direct one that's only got this one sort of corner in it to get to you here and you want them to basically as much as possible ignore the fact that these edges exist so let's talk about how we do that now so you know I've explained what the problem is let's talk about the solution to this problem so um, transparency this for a second I'm going to draw, draw exactly the same edges into my new layer so we've got a edge here I've got an edge here I've got an edge here and you know, I think I may have mentioned this before, but you know, if we have a goal, we make sort of a fake edge that's just one little, you know, a little box that says, you know, this is where you're going. Um, so let's turn off that other one. Uh, in fact, let's put let's put the guy down as well. So, guy standing here. Um, bring that back up. So. What we do is we do a kind of look ahead to figure out. So we've, as, as I mentioned before, we've already got an algorithm that if, you know, if these three edges didn't exist, it just knows to do that. But when we have more than one edge, what we want to do is we want to look ahead to see where we're going. Um, and so the way we do that is we basically do a clipping maneuver. So I will draw this um, hmm. so I'm glad um, yeah, I'm glad I talked about how we have only eight ways of movement because that means that uh, when we clip, what happens is you know we look at this edge and we say, you know we I think I'm gonna, in fact, yeah, I think I'm gonna have to explain one more thing before we um, get onto that. So the last thing is, you know, an edge, because we talked about we had jump edges, we can actually have edges that are not just lines, but, uh, you know, boxes like that. Um, and what we can do is we can sort of reverse the process of walking towards this box. So if we have a guy here, you know, we want him to walk there and then there to get to that box to get to the closest position on that edge we can reverse that process and we can say well um let's say this so i'm trying to, i'm trying to match colors that i have in the previous things so in the sort of demo so i'm going to use green for this and i'll show you this demo in a second so we can divide the space around an edge like so and um, I think there's a name for this, but it is escaping me just at the moment. 
Um, I think I've got blue and red reversed here. But that's okay. They're just sort of guidelines. Oops. I'll come off this edge like that, and that one like that. So as you can see, I've divided up the space into um, into a number of zones. So say um, say we have this zone here. So this uh, one triangle, and we know that if we're standing in here, or really if we're standing at any point in this triangle we can move towards this edge. To get there, we probably want to go straight down, but we can also go this way and we can go this way. And whereas if we're up here, you know, we know that we want to go this way because say if we went this way, we'd end up missing the edge. We go off in, you know, we'd miss it. And so we can go all the way around here, um, figuring out what direction to travel based on which of these sort of sectors we're standing in. Um, so over here, I think uh, this one, so you know, just to clarify, this one here, you know, you go in that direction. And obviously this is uh, sort of ro rotationally symmetrical. Um, so, you know, on the bottom, we go up or we can go in either of these directions and you know here we want to go that way and here we want to go that way or that way to you know we will reach the edge there so this is how we figure out what direction to drive in so let me show you just with a single edge uh, the nav region drive test as this is called so let me draw in a navigation region just like we have before now this is um, you know, this is probably not the easiest thing to see. Um, but what we're looking at here is this darker sort of supposed to be an arrow. So you'll notice that this diagram looks remarkably similar to this one. We are actually dividing our space and you'll see these green tick marks, you know, just to reduce the clutter, those would be going up and down. Um, but you can see I've actually drawn in the diagonals because those are slightly trickier. So you can see this green arrow that says that if we're in this sector, we want to go sort of down and that way yeah um, whereas if we come into this one we want to go straight down so from here we go straight down whereas if we come into this one we want to go straight down but we could also go diagonally to the left or the right um, as we said here you know diagonally to the left or the right but primarily straight down and you know if we come around here you know it's diagonal uh, it's uh, to the left we want to go to get to get into this edge from here, but we could also go diagonally up or down, whereas here we definitely want to go left. And um, if I turn on the pathing, you can see this dotted blue line just shows the path that would take us um, from the current point if we started driving in that direction, would take us to the edge. So you can see that there. So we always get to the edge with a nice short path from where we start. So. Now that I've explained that, let's go back and look at this situation. So what we want to do, uh, wrong layer. You know, if we if we drew that same diagram here, we'd be you know, green goes up, and then I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go sort of pink because that's what we had. We go that one goes there and there. That one goes there. And there, so we're in a sector where we could go straight down or that way. But um, you know that that only gets us to this first edge. What we need to do then is we then need to look ahead. So I'm just going to do the diagonals, but the same principle works on the straight up and down. So we look ahead to this next one and we say, well, this one goes like that. And like that so you know rather than having having that um, sort of limit drawn in here it moves along to here and similarly you know I'm, in fact I'm just gonna go let's go with a single dimension here so we're only going to consider the uh, edges that go sort of in this diagonal 
but the same process works for the ones that go up and down and left and right and in the other diagonal. So what we do is we say, you know, here's, here's the thing that tells us what sector we're in for this first edge. And we say, right, well, we've got that covered. Let's look ahead to the next edge. And what happens is we draw this up like this. And we say, ah, that's different. In fact, we go all the way to sort of an imaginary point, an imaginary line like this. Um, so that might be like this. And so the first edge is telling us we can go between this clipping point and this clipping point, but then we look ahead to the second edge and it clips us down to here and here. Then we look ahead to the third edge and you know it comes up and it clips us down even further. In fact, I'm going to make a quick adjustment to this. You know, it might come out all the way out here. And we drag that one up. And that, that is uh, further than this one. So we just stay clipped to here. So it's still out to there. Whereas this one, you know, comes up and it clips us down to there. So we're clipped down to this section here. Um, and then finally, you know, we get down to this last point and we find that it gets clipped down to here and we just have this section here on this axis. So let's, um, let's look at what this looks like in practice in the uh, little demo. So I'm going to get rid of that and let's try and redraw exactly what I've drawn there. So I have a nice long one there. Um, and then we have a smaller one and we have one that goes off the edge like that and then we have the goal here and you'll notice if we stick the path on that it draws exactly the path we want it doesn't go for this point here on the left of this edge it actually comes in further to make sure it can go through all of the um, all of the parts of this edge. I'm going to sort of redraw this slightly so it matches up more with what we were saying. So that one comes all the way across, it doesn't matter. And then this final you know, edge there. In fact, look, this uh, yeah, this has clipped us all the way down. And so you can see the um, clipping points that are important as, uh, yeah, the left one is in fact blue. So this, this blue tick mark here is one clipping point. And so you can see we've gone to there. Um, this light one is, I believe, I don't actually remember what the light blue one is. Ah, yes, the light blue one is the diagonal for the first edge, whereas the dark blue one is the fully, uh, you know, clipped direction. And you can see the red one, you know, if we were coming from this other direction, gets clipped down to uh, just this sort of threshold thing. And you can see there's a little bit of flickering, which is not really important. Um, you know, it still makes a nice path. Um, occasionally, because our movement speed is not an exact integer value, you can see that, you know, on one frame, he's at one position, then he skips one and he goes there. So, yeah, so he, he moves on one frame, he moves two pixels on the x-axis and then one pixel, then two, then one, then two, because our movement speed just happens to be 1.5 pixels per frame, um, which leads to some sort of tricky situations where occasionally you get this sort of um, thing where it just touches the line. It's not very uh, exact, but that's kind of okay. So the flickering doesn't actually happen in practice because he's moving this path um, in an animated way. So you can see here that it goes for the red, um, red section that's been clipped before continuing on the path. So that's you know, and you'll notice if I drag drag the starting position around, probably obviously not under an edge that he has to go through, but you know, if I drag the starting position around, the path always stays, you know, with a minimum number of elbows in it. Um, you know, obviously this he has serious problems getting up to here because I'm behind the edge, um, but that's fine. So I can extend this slightly. Um, what happens if I delete that last edge? You know, that we do have cases where you know we have an edge that's like 
going sideways so we can we'll clip to a point on there and then if you get more edges like say he needs to go through one he needs to go through there and then come around and say go through that one and then go through one over here um, you know I can move unfortunately that causes yeah that's like a stuttery thing that's fine like just ignore the ignore the stutter that's actually intentional but you'll notice that I can move this around as much as I like and the end of this path doesn't really change because these later edges aren't really affecting the clipping that is occurring up here you'll notice the uh, markers for the clipping don't actually move around so yeah so we clip up through there um, to the furthest edge we can reach that actually affects the clipping before we know we have to turn a corner we have to, we require an elbow to get around a corner in the navigation um, because you know that's how we work out which of these sort of zones we're in for a um, for a series of edges as opposed to a single edge um, and yeah and then you know we go into the game and um, put our navigation man back you know we get fairly nice paths that sort of don't have too many corners in them like if you know if I spring up the uh, yeah here we go you'll notice there's a whole lot of um, let's see if we can get them up here you know there's a whole lot of uh, these these edges along here but it doesn't matter if I click there I just have to get around that corner you know he won't he won't make corners he won't take turns around these edges so uh, this is probably a great one because it goes through there and he just goes straight on through and then he makes rather than like going you know all the way to the end and then making a corner he um, makes that corner as soon as he needs to so just in the middle there you saw him come around that corner and that's just so that that is sort of a very detailed explanation of how our um, sort of path clipping works just to make sure the paths that we make are you know these nice smooth ones rather than these sort of jagged ones that make it really obvious where the edge boundaries are so that's everything that i have to talk to you about this particular episode uh, in the next episode i'm going to talk about one more of these challenges that we um have had to come up with a solution to with pathfinding so it's you know it's not simple not as simple as sort of dividing it up into edges and throwing a star at it we have have to sort of make sure that the paths we're getting are still um you know polished and look good so uh yes the usual usual talk about websites you can follow my blog at andrewrussell.net um and i will you know i'll post blog posts with these videos you could also follow my twitter and i will um i'll, I'll post some nonsense but i will also post these videos um you can follow me on YouTube. You're probably already on YouTube watching these videos. So, you know, go go to my channel, hit the subscribe button and you can um, find out when I post a new video. You can also follow River City Ransom. You follow at River City Ransom on Twitter and, um, you know, you'll get my videos. We'll get uh, retweeted over here, but also, you know, we have some new videos coming out with uh, combat. And as well, you know, the game also has uh, at River City Ransom game on Facebook and um, those videos will also get posted there if you like to find out more about the game and you know when, when it's coming out and you know what exciting things we're working on so thank you very much for watching and i will see you in the next video